The second most stolen work of art is a Rembrandt painting that has been stolen four times on account of its small size that makes it perfect for stealing. Coming in at number one most stolen work of art is the Ghent Altarpiece, also known as the Adoration of the Mystic Lamb, and it has been stolen seven times throughout history. It is only within the last century that the work has been returned to its originally intended display location at St. Bavos Cathedral in Ghent, Belgium. Welcome back to Pretty as Pear's Art High series. If you have not seen the rest of the series and would like to, I will link the playlist down below. Before we talk about all of the thefts over the years, I want to take some time to talk about the painting itself. Completed in 1432, this painting was one of the first examples of the potentials of oil paint. This is by no means the first oil painting, but at over 11 feet tall, it was certainly the most impressive at the time. Not only is the work huge, it's also full of tiny little details, some of which were painted by the artist with brushes made from a single hair. This painting consists of 12 panels, eight of which are hinged to allow the piece to open and close. Historically, the altarpiece remained closed for the majority of the year and was only open for feast days. I'm not going to go super in depth with all of the symbolic meaning within this painting, but if you are interested in that, I'm linking a few resources in the show notes that are linked below. For now, here are the basics. Starting with the altarpiece in a closed position, the bottom corner panels on either side depict the patrons who funded the creation of the altarpiece. Between them, on the left is St. John the Baptist, and on the right is St. John the Evangelist. St. John the Baptist was the patron saint of the cathedral in which this altarpiece was housed, and St. John the Evangelist is traditionally credited as the author of the Apocalypse, which is the source material that became the inspiration for this painting. Moving to the panels above, we see an Annunciation scene. Annunciation refers to the moment that the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she will carry the Son of Christ. Above the Annunciation panels, we see several smaller panels, and from left to right, we see the prophet Zacharias, who's the father of John the Baptist, then we see the Eritrean and Cumaean Sibyls, which are female figures from ancient Greece and Rome that predict the future. And then on the right, we see the prophet Micah, who predicted the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem. Moving on to the altarpiece in an open position, we have twice as much to look at. In the open position, the altarpiece is split into two rows. On either side of the top row, we see Adam and Eve depicted as God's first human creations. Christ is depicted in the center top row. Virgin Mary is on the left, and St. John the Baptist is on the right. Now, the lower panels really show what this piece is about at its core. Flanked by gathering crowds on either side, the central bottom panel depicts the sacrifice of the mystic lamb. This is, of course, a metaphor for the sacrifice of Christ, and all of the additional panels tie back to this central theme in some way. Again, this is a super basic overview. There is a lot more happening within the details of this work, but there's already a lot of content out there that addresses that. Now that we've discussed a little bit about what the piece is about, we can jump into the thefts. From its completion in 1432, the altarpiece had just over a century of relative peace, but then in 1566, the painting was targeted for the first time by Protestants on a mission to destroy examples of Catholic idolatry. They broke down the cathedral doors with a battering ram with intentions to burn the piece, but fortunately the altarpiece was disassembled and hidden prior to their arrival. The altarpiece remained in hiding for quite some time after that. In 1794, Napoleon Bonaparte sent troops to steal four of the panels from St. Bavos, and they sat on display in the Louvre following the success of this heist. It was not long before the panels were returned following Napoleon's defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Upon their return, the cathedral's vicar general sold six of the panels to repay his own personal debts, claiming he sold them because they were in poor condition. This was, of course, not true. They were in absolutely perfect condition at this time. After moving through several different salesmen, they ended up with the king of Prussia and were on display in Berlin for the century to follow. Remember, the Ghent altarpiece is comprised of 12 panels, so Germany only housed half of the altarpiece. During World War I, the Germans attempted to steal the other half of the altarpiece from St. Bavos, but were thwarted by cathedral custodians who had anticipated the theft and hidden the remaining panels. At the end of the war, the restoration of the altarpiece to the cathedral was a condition of the Treaty of Versailles. Just a few years after, on April 10, 1934, a group of thieves broke in and stole the lower left joined panels from the cathedral. At the time of the heist, the police prioritized responding to the theft at a cheese shop across the street and the thieves got away. 
The thieves requested 1 million francs ransom for the last judges panel and returned the other panel as a show of good faith. Officials refused to pay the ransom, and the panel's been missing to this day. A highly respected copyist named Jeff Van Der Vieken created a copy of the panel that has been on display with the altarpiece since. Many speculated over the years that Van Der Vieken actually stole the panel and returned a painted over original as a copy when his plans for collecting ransom failed. Of course, now that we have modern technology, we have been able to disprove this theory. World War II offered a whole new set of problems as Nazis set off to steal as much art as they possibly could. Adolf Hitler and Hermann Göring both admired the painting and felt that Germany deserved the altarpiece as a corrective to the Treaty of Versailles. The cathedral anticipated this theft and attempted to hide the piece by transporting the altarpiece to the Vatican in Rome, but they were intercepted by the Nazis on their route. The Nazis stole so much art during the span of the war, and some of it, including the Ghent altarpiece, was recovered by the Monuments Men, a U.S. military unit dedicated to the safety and retrieval of these cultural artifacts. We will cover Nazi looting during World War II and the Monuments Men in much further detail in a coming video. The Ghent altarpiece was returned to St. Bavo's Cathedral in October of 1945 and has been there ever since. Recently, the altarpiece underwent a $2.4 million restoration following concerns on the physical condition of the piece. The altarpiece had been restored several times in its several century-long history, and upon removing some of those layers, the art world was shocked by what they uncovered. Specifically, the mystic lamb looks eerily human after the restoration. Today, the altarpiece sits in the cathedral behind bulletproof glass, and visitors can even take an artificial reality tour for about $17 a person. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out prettiestpair.com for more content and freebies. I'm also linking show notes with additional resources down below, and don't forget to tune in next Friday for Prettiest Podcast. Keep an eye out for the next installment of this heist series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.